going on everybody I am back oh what I see so many bloody cars here holy someone's having a party damn yeah, I think someone's having a huge party here and I'm not even invited what the hell holy shit talk about party this is ridiculous like what is going on and I am not invited. I feel so left out. God damn. No. <laughs> I really know these people here. But yeah. So. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Back from another video. And I come with a funny story actually. Uh, I didn't think I was going to have a funny story. Oh I feel like I'm going to sneeze. So I got my car back from service. Uh, amazing job. Uh, by the dealer. Had it back. Um, I brought it in for service because I wanted to get the maps updated in it and everything like that. So, and I had a little bit of rattle that I, that I heard from the passenger side. I think fans. So, luckily, the car was under warranty, and uh, it sounded like the, the blower motor actually was going. So, they they went ahead. They were, they ordered the part. The next day it was here. They replaced it. I had my car back within two days. Uh, I had a courtesy car from. Uh, David Morris Fine Cars. Uh, if you have not seen a uh, little quick view of the courtesy car, uh, courtesy of, a, <laughs> of the Mercedes GLK 350, courtesy of David Morris Fine Cars from Edmonton, uh, make sure to have a uh, check out the video and click on that link right here. I think it's somewhere right here. Uh, click on that, and you'll see it says a uh, 2015 GLK 350 in Obsidian Black, same color as my car. And damn, was this a uh, little small SUV? Was it ever fun to drive? And the technology it had, I was, I was just surprised by how much tech it had, how comfortable the ride was. But make sure to click that link, check out the video, and uh, the more views they get, you know, the more you guys check it out, uh, the more reviews it can bring for you guys. You can actually guys check out more interesting and uh, more interesting and unique cars, I guess I could say it that way. But yeah, so uh, funny story. Uh, I got into here, I was like, you know what, okay, time to go for a cruise. I've been lazy all day, didn't do anything, and it's six o'clock already. Uh, I was like, you know, time to go throw on the GoPro and go for the cruise or whatever. I'm like, okay, well, I can't record with uh, my mic and use the GoPro stock mic because it's crap. So I was like, wait, where the heck did my mic go? Did I leave it in the other car or what? Turn my whole house almost upside down. Turn my car upside down. I was like, where the heck did my mic go? What the heck? And then I look at my passenger side uh, seat right here. It was like right in the dip. It just lying right there. I was like, are you serious? And it's black, so it's really hard to notice it. I was like, wow, I spent 20 minutes looking everywhere. And I was like, oh, it's just it's right there in my car, right next to me. Nice. So I was like, so that was just kind of threw me off a bit. But yeah, it's uh, 6 o'clock here. And what? A waste of a day. Well, not a waste of a day, but I guess you could say it was a very relaxing day. Uh, I think I woke up around 8 o'clock and uh, I just dozed around, bed, laid around, and uh, watched a couple movies here and there. Nice E class. Uh, yeah, I watched a few movies. Uh, what did I watch? Yeah, I watched uh, Kingsman The Secret Society. Honestly, I wasn't. Uh, I don't know, I guess I can't, I won't say that it wasn't too fun movie because the movie wasn't bad. Um, the idea was good, and the execution wasn't that great, I don't think. It could have been better. Uh, it was a very long movie as well, too. And uh, the other movie I watched was, uh, God, I just don't know why. Oh, yeah, uh, Chappie, that robot movie. The movie's called Chappie. That movie I really liked. I really, really liked that movie. And, uh, I guess maybe it's more uh, why I like it. I think it's probably because, uh, I'm in the technology field myself. Uh, so I do see, spoiler alert right here. If you don't want to get spoiled by the movie, make sure to skip this rest of this video. Uh, or skip to a time that will be posted when I will all stop talking about the movie. But yeah, uh, if you don't care about spoilers, here it goes. But yeah, the I'm a technology. You know, this movie is uh, all about AI and how AI develops itself and the consciousness here and there. And I think they did a really, really good job at uh, 
how they executed the movie with all that robot and a few actors. I don't know. I don't really think the execution was really, really well done. There was a, a bit of an action film, a bit of a um, kind of like a like a father to child romance kind of movie. Uh, because the robot, it it just it grew so fast, and you could see that well, there was like that connection between that robot's AI and the, the creator and his mommy, I guess. And it was such a such an enlightening movie. It was such a such a well done movie, I think, uh, for a movie that had like almost no anticipation. And there was no workout uh, of the movie. There was there wasn't like a huge trailers or anything like this. There was like one little trailer, and that's it. And there wasn't much talk about the movie either. But it was it was a very well done movie. I, uh, I would say in my personal opinion, I really liked it and I would rewatch it again for sure. It's a very very good movie. I liked it. It's good. I can't see them making a sequel though. Uh, maybe maybe they will. It's something based on AI intelligence and uh, two robots. Uh, but I I really I can't see how they would muster up a starting point and a story. From what happened at the end of the movie, right? Because uh, um, the creator, I think his uh, name is Dion, he gets shot, and Chappie's like, "Oh my God, you're dying, whatever." And when Chappie, the robot, he figured out how to uh, capture consciousness, so he captures his own consciousness. Uh, then he saved Dion, captures his consciousness, and threw it into a robot. And then Dion, when he was in the robot body. Moved uh, uh, Chappie's consciousness because his robot body was dying into another robot body. So there's that, and then uh, right at the end, uh, when mommy, I guess, oh, well, that's what Chappie calls her, because she got she gets killed, but he saved her consciousness when he was just testing the the, the, the experiment, pretty much. And uh, right at the end, they show. Like the new versions of the, of the robot bodies, and uh, they show Chappie and Dion put the mommy's consciousness into this new robot. So, and it just ends off right there. So, I can't really see, yeah, I can't see if they could make a sequel out of that. And if they could, I can see if they can start off from a certain point. Um, but i rather they not. I don't think so. Orangina, everybody. I do love Orangina. One of the best drinks that I will get from like a gas station or whatever. I do love Orangina. Who's it made by? Uh, my guess is it is a product of Coca-Cola, maybe. No idea. I do like love Coca-Cola myself as well. So, Coke, if you are watching this, sponsor me? Question mark? No, I'm kidding. But yeah, no. What the hell's this guy doing? Inching forward, inching forward, inching forward like a red light. She would have got a red light ticket by a long shot. Uh, driving this. Some freaking. Now she switches lanes like crazy behind me. Okay, cool. There's like a young girl. Uh, the one thing, you know, one thing I really know about this, and I guess I can't say it, it annoys me, but. What I noticed, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, how can I word this? Maybe, yeah, I guess I guess I can say a lot of Asian or Oriental or whoever, whatever you want to say. Uh, people from Asia, I'll call you, yeah, I think I'd say a lot of people actually from Asia. Even if it's Indian, if it's uh, if they're brown or they're Asian or whatever, a lot of them sit uh, at the steering wheel like this, like. They're so bloody close that you know if the airbag goes off, you're gonna be dead. Like that space where this needs to, needs to fly off, and then the airbag needs to deploy, your head's gonna be through the dash already. Like I can't imagine sitting like this with a steering wheel right here. Like I can understand if you're small or whatever, but adjust your body properly, and not just like you're like, you're like, you're like, like this. You're driving like, oh my god, I'm gonna freaking airbag goes off, I'm done kind of thing. I was like, I don't get how, how people even learn those driving positions. Uh, I do believe that without my driving position, which I currently use, uh, is the proper driving position. Before, you know, when I was uh, when I was a bit younger, 
I used to drive like a little bit lean back, like one of those, uh, or we used, to, we used to call that position the, uh, the drive by position. Because you, uh, you would lean back and your head would be right against the, eight, uh, the B, B pillar. So you know, so you can like kind of, you can lean, lean, lean over, do a drive by, and then lean back. You can't get shot, kind of thing. <laughs> that, that, that's what we used to call it. But one of my buddies, he told me about these uh, this Mercedes Winter Driving Academy. I was like, you know what? Actually, be really cool because uh, it was perfect timing because I was looking to get a new car. So I was like, you know what? I will be looking at Mercedes anyway, and uh, I was steering towards Mercedes. At that time, um, and uh, we went out. We got uh, we got tickets. We went to this uh, winter driving academy, which was a full day uh, out by one of the cities out here. Pretty much like on an empty, almost like an empty field, covered in ice and snow, blah blah blah. And we drove all their cars from SLK 55s to CCC 3507 uh, to. A few E350s, one with all season tires, one with winter tires. But they're identical cars. Just the one to show us the difference between all season and winter uh, and the actual handling, pro handling pro properties of each. And from SUVs to even the smart car. And I gotta say, for, with a test that we did do, the smart car did very, very well with the winter tires. I was so surprised how, how well it handled. Like I could hit the brakes, this thing would just stop on a dime. Um, and then they did a uh, emergency brake test uh, uh, on winter tires as well. And I had I was an ML63, and this thing is a tank, or even the GL. Uh, I think we had the GL550 there. And oh god, you mad? You hit that pedal, the thing hits the brakes, and you just slide, 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 and you go because there's so much weight to it, right? Uh, but there was a lot of things that they taught us, uh, especially like proper driving positions. And that's that's just how I learned my driving position now is from them. The proper mirror position settings too, and because uh, like right now when I have it set up, I have it set up so that my back, my center mirror, I can see right through the back of my car, and then this mirror takes comes in effect when pretty much how it works is when half of the car out of that is gone in here, it's halfway in there. So I never see the exact same thing in there and there. And the same thing works for that side. When half the car is going on that side, it's in that side. So it, lim it limits uh, how big my blind spot is, actually. I'm sure there is still going to be a little bit of blind spots, of course, but not as much as before. Because I see people nowadays, when they do have their mirrors set up, uh, they have it so that they can see like the whole door handle on each side or whatever. For me to see any of my car, I have to go all the way, oh, let's put it right there, I can see my door handles. For that side, I have to go right there and I can see my door handles. So I, I cover my bases pretty well, and it's it's actually a very good setup. When they first showed it to me, I was like, oh, that feels like it's gonna be really, really weird. But now when I started using it, I was just like, hmm, this is really, really good. I was surprised uh, how useful the position, that position setup is. So take it from me, uh, I would recommend uh, using that uh, mirror settings. So full back, and then half and half kind of thing. Um, and then the driving position, what they, what they taught me is make sure like how far your seat is up. Uh, put it as low as you can in the back, as high as you can in the front. Uh, so it's like your seat, uh, so it supports your your thigh, your, yeah, yeah your, th your thighs. I'm thinking muscle, what muscle it is, yeah. Uh, supports that. So this part of the seat has to go up really high back that part it goes really really low pretty much as low as it can and uh, the front wheel position is all about if uh, when you press on the clutch if you have a clutch if you fully depress it there's still a little bit of a bend in your knees and if you fully depress the, the brake pedal there's still bend in your knees because you don't want to have a fully extended foot because if you get into an accident especially uh, and if you that thing caves in you're gonna pop your knee you need that bend a little bit of bend um, and then with this, with the hand positions and how far your back is, it's all about if you can go like this with like your shoulders uh, leaving the back, uh, then it's it's good. That's how you're supposed to be driving. You're technically supposed to be able to do, I think, almost 180 degrees, if not 180 degrees, and uh, to be able to go like this with your shoulders lifting off um, the back of the, the back of the seat. So. Very, very good seat position. You know, I love it doing that. And now every single car I drive now, 
it's the position I use because actually it's very very comfortable. Um, the funny thing is I showed it to my sister. She's like, oh, this this looks like you said like you said so low and so weird. And I told her, you know what? Sit down, adjust it to these specs, and try. And she's like, well, it's actually really comfortable because you don't have any strain in your shoulders, your elbows. You just relax and you go. And I was like, yeah, you see, they know what they're talking about. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, so. Um, let me know what you guys think of that uh, little snap video of the GLK. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see more of those. I'm just uh, trying to work out a few things with uh, with a few dealers about having a look at their cars and using it for using them again, making like little review videos up here and there about those cars, and so I can showcase to you guys. What kind of cars they are, the specs, this and that, what's good, what's bad, and go from there. But yeah, I'm gonna sign up for the day. You guys take it easy, have fun, um, make sure to have a good long weekend. Well, we got a good long weekend here. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, comment on the video, and uh, see you guys next time. Take it easy. Yeah.